Hey folks, JR Stormont here with the FinOps Foundation, and I am very excited to be joined uh, by Mr. Rick Oaks, uh, who's the guy who leads the AWS Cloud Optimization Product Management Team as part of Insights that includes the Cost Explorer recommendations and Compute Optimizer, savings plan, reservations, and all the things that are cloud sizing and savings. Rick, good to see you, man. Yeah, great to see you. So where are you right now? Uh, I'm in New York. We've been hard at work the last few days and doing some offsite work and launching some product. Okay, so that's why we're here. You just launched a new product. What did you launch? So earlier today, we launched Savings Plan Return Button, which allows you to return a savings plan after you purchased it within seven days. So that Savings Plan Return Button, okay, so that seems like a very small thing like in a console, but what does it really do? If somebody does that return, what does it enable? Yeah, it's a tiny button. It's a tiny button with a big value. So now uh, when you purchase a savings plan, you can return that savings plan within seven days. If maybe you got the region wrong or the instance type wrong or any of the terms or conditions, if the, if you made a mistake or, or, or whatnot. But now you're in a situation where there's a little bit less anxiety <laughs> on getting the dropdowns correct or the terms or, or whatnot correct when you're making that savings plan purchase. Okay, so it's like when I'm buying an airline ticket and I know that it's refundable, it's easier for me to go buy that ticket knowing that if I made a mistake, I can return it in a couple of days or next week or something like that. Yeah, that's a great uh, example because we, we want to just take the anxiety out of the transaction of buying a savings plan, right? We don't want you to... Savings plans are large. It's a lot of money when you're making a, a large commitment with your company's money. <laughs> it's like, sometimes those numbers are much larger than any, like how much we get paid. Yeah. And so uh, that anxiety that goes along with trying to like type in a big number and making a commitment is something uh, that's not so helpful. We, we want to really help customers and everybody go through the savings plan life cycle with less anxiety and less concern and ultimately get to higher savings plan coverage and utilization rates. You mentioned these big numbers. What are the limitations on this? And what are the terms? Yeah, great question. You have seven days after you purchase a savings plan to return that savings plan. And then you have to be in the same calendar month because we close the bill. We close the monthly bill and, and, and send that bill out and, and all of that sort of stuff. So as long as you don't cross that uh, boundary into a new month, you have seven days to return. And then that's for any savings plan under $100 an hour. And so for a one year, it's something like eight or 900K for a three-year, it's a several million dollar purchase. And the term will be that you can return 10 saving plans a year for an account, for each individual account. And, and now, so you have a fair number of uh, opportunities to attempt like a really advanced savings plan strategy is having lots of smaller savings plans. And so this is much easier to purchase lots of smaller savings plans and layer them in on top of each other. Instant savings plans and compute savings plans. And so now you're in a lot more self-service control because that button, you just click that button, it'll come back. You mentioned different types of savings plans. Is this just on spend commits? Is it on resources? Is it on all types of savings plans? Compute savings plans, instant savings plans, all, all savings plans. Okay. Um, and then if you click that cancel button, 24 hours, within 24 hours, that savings plan will be reverted back in your mm -hmm. bill. And then whatever it was covering will revert back to the on-demand rate. Or, or if another savings plan would have covered it, then that other savings plan would cover it again. I think all the advanced users are probably wondering the next question, which is, it, is an API supported? Do people actually have to log into the console and click the button? Or is there some way that they can automate it themselves or with their platform or whatever they're doing? Yeah, absolutely. I, I hope that every, I, that's always the answer. But uh, yeah, what, there's an API. It'll be, it's called the return savings plan API. And you could call that and do, you could do one at a time, but you could stack up to the limitations on size or count or things like that. That's right. Via SDK, CLI, however you want to engage with it. Okay. Awesome. Of all the things that you could have launched right now and what, why this thing right now? Why is it, why do you think this is important for customers? Yeah. So we talked to a lot of customers and we listen, like, how do you go about the process of evaluating and making a purchase of a savings plan? And we have our recommendations that we've end. A lot of customers spend a lot of time analyzing their savings plan purchases because the risk of getting it wrong is pretty high. Over committing or assigning an instant savings plan to the wrong instance family, 
and, and then making a purchase that sometimes you would need to go try to unwind with a ticket and a request to AWS support to go get that canceled and reverted. And with the return button, ideally the amount of time it takes to do that analysis to make the purchase should shrink dramatically because there's far less of a, a side effect or amount of work you have to go do if mistakes are made. If you, if you make that return and you realize that your analysis maybe was incorrect, it will revert back to charging you what the on-demand rates were during that period, but you've at least avoided a mistake if there was in fact an error in your calculation or if usage changes or something. That makes Absolutely. a lot of sense. In some ways, I feel like this is, it's a tiny feature in terms of how it's, how it shows up. And when you first mentioned it at launch, I was like, that's not such a big deal, but it feels like a bit of a shift in the way of thinking around how commitments are becoming more self-service. You've been able to purchase them for a long time, but I think AWS historically required a ticket and a conversation internally. So I, I think, is this the first time that you or others are doing any sort of like self-service return or reversal of these things? Yeah. Self-service is such an important uh, usage pattern that we really want to embrace. So offering that return button directly in the console allows you to just directly take the action yourself without waiting on a support call or a ticket response or anything like that. That's definitely a future, especially with APIs, the ability for even third-party products and platforms to be able to call that API to, to do a return as well is, is a neat option. So we just really want to continue to enable the self-service capability. We know how advanced our FinOps users are. Um, I, almost every company I talk to has a custom dashboard, right? <laughs> They've built some really cool view I haven't heard of or thought of before, and, and they're thinking about it in a new way. So it's better for us just to provide the capability to our customer base and then see what they do with it. And I do lots of really cool things with it. I think this is why I was interested in talking to you about this. And at the foundation, we're starting to cover more of these cloud provider changes because these are things that flow downstream from you as a cloud provider and your peers or their clouds to not just practitioner users, but to platforms, to consultancies, like this is something that everyone can pick up and use. And it's a change that uniquely, you know, you as the provider of that program and service can offer. So it's great to hear that. I guess, you know, where can people find out more from you and ask you more questions about this? Where are you going to be to talk about? Yeah, so there's a couple of answers to this. Thanks to our AWS's relationship with the FinOps Foundation. Myself and a, a lot of my team members are on the FinOps Foundation Slack and we're excited to be able to converse with our customers on that Slack channel, but we're also going to be at FinOpsX and we're excited to be at FinOpsX and we're going to bring as many people as you're going to let us, JR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to be ready and prepared to have a lot of conversations with everybody there and talk about how we continue to enable self-service capability with commitment management and, and all of the optimization use cases. And for folks watching, we even vet all the AWS requests of attendees because we want that really great experience where everybody you turn to can talk about FinOps there. But are you planning to launch, announce other features there by chance? Or are you going to attend my breakout session, JR? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have a keynote spot, actually. A uh, keynote spot. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll make a deal. We'll see. But if you're in the audience, we'll have a surprise for you. How's that? Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the cool things this year is that we're given space. If you all, the cloud providers want to make announcements, you've got that room. Definitely folks, if you're there, yeah, come, come see if uh, Rick has any surprises for you, ask questions. It's a cool feature announcement and looking forward to seeing you in San Diego in 91 days. Wow. 91 days. Can't wait. Safe travels, man. Bye-bye.